diamonds in the rough. NFL Draft Diamonds. Time to shine. NFL Draft Diamonds, and today I have with me Zach von Rosenberg, who's a punter out of LSU. How are you, sir? Doing great. How are you, Jimmy? Oh, hanging in there, man. Uh, why don't you just kind of give us a brief history of you, uh, if you don't mind? I mean, bring us up to speed. I mean, uh, just you you and your brief history as a punter. Um, so I, I kind of have an unorthodox, uh, you know, road to being a punter. Right. Uh, I dropped out of high school played for six years, uh, never went to college. And after my six year career in baseball, I enrolled at LSU, which would have been uh, fall of 2015. And then I walked on the football team spring of 2016. And I didn't walk on as a punter just yet. I walked on as a tight end, gained a bunch of weight. But in that time, um, I had the ability to show that I did have a leg and I could kick. And, uh, you know, in that, again, in that time, uh, the coaches recognized that and hey, you know, you got a leg and we were pretty deep at the tight end position. And when I first started, there was no tight ends. Everybody was, everybody was injured. And so I was, you know, I, I make the joke all the time that I made my first camp uh, fall camp as a tight end, but I didn't make my second fall camp as a punter, uh, which is kind of ironic, but um, yeah. So I, like I said, I, I went through tight end then became a punter and um and, you know, it, it kind of stemmed from high school and playing soccer my whole life, but I was able to get an opportunity and they let me be the second string punter until I got an opportunity as the first string punter. So, um, again, like you said, I mean, uh, you know, you moved on from high school, ended up playing, I guess, in the Pittsburgh Pirates organization, right? Mm-hmm. That's definitely interesting. What did you do for them? Uh, so I was a pitcher. Uh, I was uh, drafted at 18. I was right-handed pitcher. And, uh, but yeah, at the beginning, I was a starting pitcher. And as time went on, I, I moved to the bullpen, battled some injuries here and there. Uh, but yeah, I was, I, at the end of my career, when I, when I was released, uh, I was a relief pitcher. Gotcha. So um, how long have you been a punter? Were you a punter like back in your high school days? So yeah, it's a funny story. I, I, I stopped playing football my freshman year of high school. Um, I was, I, I played a couple of positions, but I mean, everybody played a couple of positions until freshman year. Uh, but I ended up, you know, stopped, I quit playing football. And uh, two years later at uh, Zachary, uh, the head coach asked me if I could, if I could punt after the, I believe the punter at the time sustained an injury or something. And uh, sure enough, I go out there and he was like, look, it's your job. Like you're, you're the guy, you got a big leg and, you know, we'll see where this goes. So 2008, uh, rather, well, it's actually the fall of 2007. And then the fall of 2008, I was punting uh, in high school. And from fall of 2008 until the spring of 2016, or actually it might have been like summer, I really didn't punt a, a football. So like there was an eight-year gap there of, of punting where I did not punt any football. So you could say I have a, I have a very young leg. Like I have an old arm because I've been throwing baseballs my whole life, but I have a young leg because I haven't kicked for very long. <clears throat> So uh, two things kind of stick out for me when it comes to you as a prospect. And, you know, I'm just going to be real. Um, number one, your size. Um, you are 6'5", 240 pounds. I mean, you are more or less the size of a tight end. So, I mean, obviously that kind of would make sense, uh, you know, for you walking in, which obviously that's not exactly what you ended up doing there at LSU. But, I mean, hey, I mean, that's one of the biggest things you got going for you is you are this big menacing, uh, you know, looking, uh, you know, punter. You're not one of these scrawny little kids out there, you know, punting. So um, obviously you put yourself out there and whoever it is who um, is the returner is not want to come, you know, you know want to come your way because, I mean, you're probably one of the bigger guys out in the field uh, there on special teams. And then the other thing, too, is just kind of, um, I mean, again, I'll be frank, it's just your age. I mean, you are a little older. Um, I want to say you're, um, are you are you 30? Is that accurate? So, yes. so, yeah, I mean, you are a little bit of an older guy, but what comes with that is a decent amount of maturity and really just experience. I mean, you figure you've, you've already, under, you know, undergone this whole aspect of being a professional you know, going the, you know, baseball route. So you kind of have an idea of like, you know, the, the business aspect of things, which is, which is, you know, okay. 
Um, I, and I think that that kind of helps you moving forward. Um, but as a punter, just want to kind of hear it from you. What do you believe are like the, um, I don't know, elite traits of, uh, what, what are the traits of an elite punter? Uh, I mean, treating it as, you know, it's a game within a game. Um, you know, it, you know, you're competing against the other punter. Your, your job is all field position and statistics and analytics and all that would show you that the team that wins the field position position battle majority of the time wins the game. They're consistently pinning the, the other team, you know, inside their 10 yard line. Uh, it makes it difficult to score. It's extra four or five plays. Maybe they have to run just to go 90 yards to score a touchdown and the scoring percent odds and percentages go down significantly whenever you're able to pin the opposing team uh, uh, deep in their, you know, end zone and, and, or near their end zone rather. And, and this year that was something I, you know, I really took ownership of is that I hadn't, improve to the level to an elite level of uh getting the ball inside the 20 yard line and i think this year i managed to lead the country and inside the 20 punts and uh, i really took ownership of it because i knew not that it was like my necessarily my weakness in the previous season but i wasn't as consistent as as i felt i should be and then you know with this year being a COVID year i just had all that extra time and i was like you know what i, I kind of want to perfect this as my craft because it's such a significant part of the game because so many teams are good at getting those two first downs so you get the ball in 25 yard line all of a sudden you get two four first downs, you're pretty much at the 50. Well, once you're at the 50, man, I can, you know, that's my specialty. I'll put the ball inside the 10 yard line regularly. And that's always been, you know, and I take pride in that because I know how important it is within the game. I'm not just going to hit a touchback and let them have the ball in the 20. You're basically, you're letting them escape, you know, uh, a situation where you're putting them in a disadvantaged situation. And so that's the, that's the competition side of it. You have to treat it as a personal competition against you and their, punter and their special teams and, and winning that battle, you know, winning a third of the game, special teams is a huge part of winning the game overall. So uh, let's just talk about your preparation, you know, leading up towards games. So um, uh, talk to me first, maybe about your approach and mentality towards training as a punter and maybe even your favorite kicking drill. Um, so I, you know, I, I've kind of got on the Tommy Moffat program. I, I, you know, I'm probably more uh, punter specific now, you know, I've been training, you know, doing punter training rather for the last three months since, since the season ended. Um, but, you know, last five years, you can't go wrong with Tommy Moffat. He's a legend. So that's how I, I prepared in the weight room. And then, and the, to be honest, in the beginning, um, I didn't know a whole lot of how to prepare my first two years. I was a little raw. I, I shouldn't say that I, going into my second year, I was much more confident, but um the training side of it was, I, I was kind of, it was trial and error for a little while until I, what I really did is I went to a couple of NFL games and got there really early and watched other punters pregame routines and then rolled that over into drill work at practice and whatnot. Um, but that was able how, how I was able to um, perfect my own routine, if you will. And I rolled over a lot of things that I did from baseball uh, to punting because pitching and punting are very, very similar. You're once the ball is in your hand, it's that you're the only guy on the field that everybody's watching. They're watching catch to kick, just like whenever that you catch the balls or you catch the ball as a pitcher and you you release it, everybody, the ball, you know, the, the game doesn't start or, or the play doesn't start until the pitcher throws. Well, the, the play on special teams doesn't start until the punter kicks the ball to the opposing team. Uh, but back to the, the drill work. Yeah. Just, just a lot of it's copycatting other guys that are the best at it. I mean, Morstead's an example. Donnie Jones is another one I've, I've watched and learned from. Um, and then, you know, my, my favorite drill now is I'm trying to uh, increase my um, repertoire, if you will, of, of different kicks, because I understand the importance of not allowing uh, the opposing, you know, the best player on the other team from catching the ball and punt. And so I've been doing like a, a, practicing my cross kick drills and uh, I did them, I did them in college, but I, I didn't have the, it wasn't in my back pocket like I wanted it to be. I want it to be a guaranteed play where I can kick the ball 40 yards and it's going to land on the turf. It's going to hit the grass. It's, it's going to be an uncatchable ball. And that's a huge, you know, in a certain situation where your, your special team coach asks you to do something, hey, I don't want them to touch the ball right here and you need a 40-yard net, that's a kick that you have to have. And so that's kind of been my deal uh, recently is I've been really working on my crossfield kicking and um, making sure that the returner has a, a very difficult time catching and, and fielding the ball. And, and what happens, I mean, is there a way for you to even prepare for like those worst case scenarios, like maybe like on pump blocks or, you know, maybe even like the weather is bad or something, or it, maybe it's a bad kick. I mean, how, how do you, how do you prepare for some of those like 
worst case scenarios as a punter, which are some of which are completely out of your control. So I, I this year I've had multiple people ask me because I've had situations. I think against Texas A&M, I had a high snap and I had to avoid a, a blocker. He would have blocked it. And then I had a, a, an air, a snap to my left, which brought me away from the shield. In college, it's different because you don't have a shield in the NFL. But people have asked me, well, how did you know that you needed to do that to get the ball off to not get blocked? And my my reaction is I was acting instinctually. I, did, I just knew where the rushers were because, you know, on tape and on film, you know how they rush you when they, and when they're going to rush you, they have cues. And uh, so in that situation, I guess in the back of your mind, you create a worst case scenario, but you don't practice it. It's kind of hard to practice. So you can't really roll over a practice panic rep into the game because it, it practices like, all right, I'm going to do a routine, 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 same thing over and over again to make sure that I'm consistent. But against Ole Miss and against A&M, it was just a situation. Where I was like, I mean, if I try to punt normal here, I'm going to get blocked. So I just instinctually reacted to where I knew the rushers were and just avoided them to get the balls off. And uh, I, if I, I might have tape of the Ole Miss one, I don't think I have the AM one, but it, it is, it's a dicey situation, but uh, being an athlete, I'm pretty fortunate that I, I've, I've, you know, I, that instinctual side of things comes naturally, naturally to me. Gotcha. I mean, and have you ever, um, I mean, do you, do you, do you prepare for any potential fake punts? I mean, obviously, I mean, you certainly have a, a decent arm or else you wouldn't have gone the route of baseball. So, I mean, has anyone ever thought about, you know, using you, you know, like in a fake punt, you know, passing the ball? Well, I can say this now, um, we, you know, cause I'm done, but we had a whole lot of fake punts, you know, that were, you know, we, we designed, we had a couple of fake field goals. We just, you know, we never pulled the trigger on them really. Um, and I guess a lot of that has to do with 2019, um, uh, we had a couple and, and obviously we had a bunch this year too, but uh, we were so dominant in 2019. We didn't need to fake anything. We could just beat you straight up. So we didn't even, we didn't even plan on, uh, or I don't even know. We didn't even need to use fake punts uh, or fake field goals in any situation in 2019, and then roll over to 2020 because we went, I guess we got kind of, I don't know, it, but we had them. We had a bunch. We just never, we just never pulled the trigger on them. So, um, I guess the next thing for you now, it, you know, as this whole draft process unfolds is going to be that pro day. Um, so that's coming up here soon. Um, what are you, what are your plans for that pro day? Um, and, you know, wh where are you practicing at now? You know, trying to prepare yourself for that. Maybe what are your, uh, what are your goals for that pro day? So I've been, I've been in Dallas training uh, for a little while now, um, just because I wanted to get more, <clears throat> um, what's the word? just d specifically design training and coaching. Uh, Cause mo most of the trainings I've been training like a football player for the last five years. I've been, you know, doing everything a linebacker would do, if you will. But I, you know, I loved it and it, and it but got me to this position, but now I've, I've kind of transitioned to training that's specific to my position. Um, and I'm sorry, what was the second part of that question? The Yeah. I mean, just um, you, you told me where you were training at, which is great. Um, but any, any goals you have for your upcoming pro day, like anything that you're trying to prove to, um, you know, potential uh, teams that, you know, would be interested. So I'll have a script written out and uh, I'll probably hand it or somebody will hand it out to the teams that are watching. Uh, but I just want to show that the, the same thing that I put on tape and uh, you know, last season uh, with my directional punting and uh, my precision punting, if you will, that that's my game. I'm not going to be the guy to, you know, I'm not going to try and hit the ball 80 yards on the field. I, I, can, I can do that, but that makes me a more inconsistent punter. Um, I'm the guy that's going to hit the ball, you know, 45 yards to 50 yards <clears throat> with good hang time. And that's going to be very difficult to return. I can dig, I can dig deep and hit a, a ball 65 yards. I can, I think I have a couple of punts from last season that were, I out punted my coverage, but I was fortunate because of the situations of whether the ball was, you know, going into the end zone or, uh racy was un completely unblocked he, who's our gunner at the time so uh, but like i understand the game and that's why I, I i played the game from a net perspective of my during my career at lsu because i understood uh if i'm hitting the ball down the field and right down the middle and giving them two options to go left or right uh they're going to get a better return on it and it's harder to cover so i made sure to, to take ownership of getting the ball as close as i can to the sidelines with as much you know distance and hang that i feel comfortable with or my my position coach feels comfortable with 
and um, and letting our players or athletes play. And then on top of that, if you get it close to the sidelines, the sidelines is that 12th defender. And uh, that's something that I want to show is I, I don't necessarily need to put every ball out of bounds uh, on my pro day, but I definitely want to show that I, you know, my, my accuracy, my precision is, is there. <clears throat> Gotcha. Um, I mean, according to my notes, I mean, you were able to uh, hit at a 50 yard plus uh, punt um, 40 times or 42, 42 times. Um, so definitely a, a guy who has an awesome leg. Um, what do you believe is like, I don't know, um, your best moment out there, uh, you know, as a player? I mean, just talk about your most memorable time there at LSU. Uh, so as a team, uh, I'm not going to be cliche and say the national championship because that's the easy answer. I'll say the Florida game um, in 2019, uh, they played a hell of a game against us. And, uh, you know, right when we knew the game was solidified, our fans started doing the Gator Chomp. And when I say our fans, I mean all 100,000 people were Gator Chomping. <laughs> and it was, it was, I've never seen anything like that in Tiger State. I mean, I'm getting chills on my arms just thinking about it and talking about it because it was so electric. And it's almost like it was a lifetime ago after, you know, because that was before COVID. It's like, did we pack stadiums before COVID? But, uh, man, it was it was electric and it was a sight to see. And then uh, I guess from a personal level, uh, you know, the, my kick, uh, I, I really, it's, it's kind of funny. I have, a, you know, some really good dagger, I'll call them drop punts. So punts that are within the 50-yard line or on the 50-yard line going in, trying to pin them inside the 20. I think I have three punts that were down at the two or three, and then one this year against Florida. So 2017, I had one down at the two. 2018, I had one down at the one. And I think this year, I had one down at the one. So And they were all in situations like fourth quarter. Um, and it was just it was just a time that we needed one. And I going out there, I knew. I was like, shoot, if we're, you know, we're up by – of uh, three points, five points, whatever. I'm like, I need to pin these dudes back and put them in a bad spot. Um, and fortunately for me, I, I, in every situation against Florida, again, that, that, that happened. So um, obviously great moments out there, you know, winning a national title um, this past season, you were named an all American, which is great. Um, so you, you have a lot of these accolades and wonderful moments out there on the football field. Uh, but let's just kind of take a second, kind of step off the football field, learn just a little bit more about, you know, you as a person. Um, tell, tell the people out there, you know, who you are, you know, outside of a football player, maybe some of your interests, hobbies, anything that you um, want to share about yourself. Well, I'm just a, I'm just a kid from Louisiana. Uh, you know, I grew up hunting and fishing, mostly fishing. So I haven't been able to enjoy that as much as I'd like to recently. That's just because life gets kind of crazy, but I hope to pick that up again when I have a lot more time. Uh, and not, not to say I haven't done it, but I haven't done it as much as I, I normally would. Um, you know, I, I enjoy uh, golfing. I haven't been able to do that as much either. either so I settle for top golf um, and I enjoy spending time with my family. I have uh, a niece, uh, two nephews, the third uh, nephew that was just born. So I actually have three nephews and a niece. And, uh, so I'm a, I'm a family person. Uh, I live a pretty private life. Um, uh, and you know, I, I, my comfort zone really is sports and that's why I'm, I'm still here. I've, you know, I've been fortunate enough and blessed to play sports competitively until now. And, uh, you know, I, I'm hoping to play as long as I can until somebody rips a Jersey off of me and tells me I'm too old. And I, I'm decrepit and I can't do it anymore, you know, and that's just my passion. Sports have always been my passion. My dad's an ex-military guy and he never did anything halfway. And that's kind of how, you know, that rolled over into my mentality. If I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it all the way. And I've been, I've been blessed that it's, it's taken me this far. Great. Um, I do want to give you the opportunity maybe to give a few shout outs to some people that have helped, you know, get you to where you're at today. Um, so, you know, family, friends, teammates, coaches, uh, maybe just a handful of people that you just want to give some love to. I guess I'll start with the, the you know, the current specialist at LSU, uh, Kate York, Avery Atkins, uh, Max, uh, a couple guys that I've, you know, played with the last couple of years. And then I'll, I'll give another shout out to Blake Ferguson. He's playing for the, the Dolphins. He's the, he's the best snapper I've ever had for good reason. He'll appreciate that shout out. Um, but uh, no, the, uh, the specialists at LSU I, had, I had spent a long time with, and it was, it was, I enjoyed it. Uh, also Preston Stafford, he, he, he'd get mad if uh, I didn't shout him out too, but, uh, and then I guess I'll, I'll give a shout out to my dad too. He'll probably watch this. My dad is, 
I'll share with you. My dad just had heart surgery, but he's doing great now. And that was a, that was a big scare for us. But he's he's you know, like I said, he's ex military man. He's he's strong and he's good to go. And I think he'll be you know, if I get an opportunity to play another game, he'll he'll be the the first one in the stands showing up ready to watch. You know. Great. Um, as we begin to wrap up, I always try my best to ask the why question. The why question really meaning, uh, you know, why do you play football? Um, and, you know, just a little bit of your motivation. Um, it's, a, it's a deep question. And, um, you know, I'm trying not to give like a cliche answer, like I love sports. And I think I think the, the only answer to that, well, now I think about it, I, I want to make eight-year-old me an 80-year-old me happy or proud. Like if I can make eight-year-old me proud, which I think I, I have I succeeded at that, and then 80 year old me proud, I think that's that's saying something because two completely different sides of your life and two walks of life are, are happy with where you are. I think you're, I think you did okay. And, uh, but on top of that, you know, just, you know, making my, making my family proud and, and uh, I enjoy sports. And like I said, it's such a, it's such an easy, um, it's such an easy thing. It's just, it comes naturally. It's not, there's nothing more than that. Like, I, I mean, I went to college late in life. That tells you right there how much I enjoy it. So it's the competitiveness, the, you know, the edge, the, you know, God, I love competition. I love winning and uh, there's nothing like it. And you can win in business, but winning in athletics and sports is just different. Gotcha. Well, I mean, obviously, you know, the, you know, we're just kind of looking uh, towards the future here for you. I mean, you have uh, an opportunity really to, um, you know, get to the league. I mean, um, I believe in my notes, you're able to go to the Hula Bowl, right? I did. I did. Okay. So, I mean, uh, you know, definitely went out there, showcase your talents uh, out there so that people can, you know, maybe uh, turn on that tape. I mean, because that's available on YouTube if, you, if anyone wants to, you know, turn that on. But um, I do want to give you one last opportunity. Um, so last thing for you, Zach, is just for you to give your pitch to all the professional teams out there. I mean, you figure there's really only – like on average, a couple of punters draft every year, but you know, why should they draft you? I mean, what sort of a player uh, would you be for uh, for a team? Yeah, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a guy that's gonna come in with a different you know an attitude that's different from the average 22 year old. I'm gonna mesh with guys on a different level than the average 22 year old because I do have all the experience in life that I have. I've been in locker rooms with great players, and I, I played six years of baseball. I've been around unbelievable. Uh, players like you know like Garrett Cole and Jamison Tyon are now bash bros and with the New York Yankees and I played with both those guys and um, it's just it's crazy how you know my life in baseball is so different than from my life in football but I, I know how to you know handle situations like that and I know how to be and I know how to be a pro and I applied being a pro to you know my time at LSU and uh, I'm ready to compete at the next level and and you know I'm ready, I'm ready to wow some people. I know that I can roll over exactly the success that I had at LSU into the NFL. I know I can be a, a 42 yard net guy. I know I can be that competitive uh, punter that you don't typically see in the NFL. I know I'm going to be passionate. I know I'm going to get fired up. I, you know, it's on tape at LSU. It, you know, I want to, I want to be able to have that uh, fire for a new team, you know, and I just like I did at LSU. And I think that, I think that teams will recognize that. Great. You know, Zach, I really do wish you best of luck moving forward. I mean, I know you got a lot going on. Um, definitely praying that your dad continues to heal up. I mean, obviously going through that surgery uh, had to be, um, you know, just kind of crazy. So I uh, hope the best for him and also hope the best for you during this whole process. I mean, again, um, a lot of great things people really need to know uh, about you that you, um, you know, bring to the table. Um, again, all-American punter, national champion uh, punter, um, a lot of great things. So uh, thanks for your time. Awesome. Thank you, Jimmy. Thanks for having me. All right. Again, Zach Von Rosenberg, uh, punter at LSU. Check him out.